Hicks. Hello, John. Guys, how's it going? It, it's Good. going great. We're out here in Arizona. It's been beautiful. It weather. looks cloudy. Is it looks cloudy? Is it nice? It's getting. Yeah, a, a it's bit. starting to get a little cloudy. Tomorrow's going to be the one day that's not supposed to be nice. It's been it's been upper seventies the whole time we've been here. It's been really really cool. But awesome. enough of, enough about us, John. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about what you've been doing. You've been busy. What's what's uh, give us give us the lowdown on the acquisition of Sam Howell. Oh yeah, Sam. That's a great. You know we were kind of sweating that this morning and uh you know uh talking to the commanders and adam peters our general manager there was uh we were sweating that out there were several teams involved with it and uh you know sam's a sam's a football player i think that's the best way to describe it you know there's guys that you know, play quarterback when you watch and then everybody I know everybody saw him play out here he had a great day against us uh this past fall but uh yeah he's a he's a quarterback but he's he's really a football player that's what i love about him you know really tough young you know he's 23 years old and has 18 starts you know in the in the league already and you know he's the same age as like uh daniels from lsu and rattler and Penix, and and he's a year younger than bo Nix. and you know so uh you know we're just really excited to uh be able to acquire him and you know we know he's a serious dude and you know he's a he's into it he works his tail off we got great reviews on him and we love them coming out of college so uh yeah we're we're happy to get him in the mix and Gino is the guy, and uh, Sam will be backing him up. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was going to ask you, John. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you told us uh, about Leonard Williams, that he's a guy that you've had your eye on for a while, and, and that's the case with, with Sam Howell, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think the day, you know, the day we played here was really, you know, that, that, was, that hit home how tough he was, how strong he was, you know, keeping his eyes downfield, finding the open receiver, and uh, – yeah, shoot, almost winning the game there at the end. I mean, he, he's, uh, like I said, you know, he's young, he's smart, he's tough, he's, he's, uh, he's just a football player. And again, that, that, I keep going back to that, but that's, that's, that's a legit thing. You know, uh, you know, he's, he's had a, he's, he's thrown the ball over, you know, shoot, this past year, he threw it over 40 times, uh, in eight games, he threw it 50 times in two games. So, you know, it was rough sledding, uh, you know, for him, uh, this past year, the commanders and, you know, obviously they're picking high and, you know, probably feel like they can get one of these top, these top uh, quarterbacks in the draft. And so, uh, they signed Marcus Mariota and, and, uh, we had great conversations with them and, you know, we're blessed to be able to pull it off. You said he's going to back Gino up. So just to clarify this, this isn't a competition. Gino is going in as a starter. Sam will be his backup. There's, there's no competition there. Well, I'm sure there's competition, but, you know, yeah, as right now. I mean, Gino, it's not like we're, we're signing him to go ahead and compete with Gino to be the starter, but I'm sure he's going to be he's, he's going to be giving it a run. He's a competitive guy. Sorry, John. Uh, t- t- tell us about uh, Leonard Williams again. I mean, that, that was that was a big deal. Uh, obviously, we want to know about about linebackers. But, um, you know, as far as as far as Leo goes, you, you said he could play all over. How, how unique is he? And then is, is he a guy that Mike McDonald looked at and goes, okay, this is just an absolute great fit for my defense, or is it just that he's just a great football player and he'd fit in any defense? No, a great, great fit for his defense. So he could play, you know, from the zero to the three to five. And you could, and I guess, you know, you, you, you said it, you hit it on the head, you can move around, uh, you know, we were a little nervous there for a minute. The defensive tackles uh, market was exactly what people said at the combine, and actually a little higher. So, uh, you know, we we uh, we hung in there. His agents did a great job of, of working with us, and uh, you know, Leonard Leonard was in Bali and and flew all the way back here and signed his contract. So uh, we were, you know, like I told you guys last week. I mean, he was obviously our priority. You know, we gave up the pick for him last year. Uh, gave up the second round pick. So that was very important, and uh, yeah, just thrilled to get him back in, in the in the building. John, a couple of departures at the same spot. Your linebacker spot feels a, a little empty right now. I mean, you guys, uh, Nick Ballore isn't there anymore. He was a great backup, but you have Bobby Wagner now headed out to Washington, and Jordan Brooks headed to Miami. How how tough were those decisions? Were you were you in the mix for him, or did you feel like, you know, or maybe Coach McDonald felt like, you know, we, we've got our eye on a, on a different style at that spot? How do you, how do you speak well, to those departures? Yeah, I mean, you, you, have to, you have to allocate your funds in a, in a specific manner. You have, to be, you have to be flexible and try to understand what's going on. I would say that, that the running back market and the, and the linebacker market, 
they went they went much quicker this year than they have in the past. And uh, so, you know, uh, happy for those guys. I really am. You know, Bobby, obviously, Hall of Famer, legend here. And then in Jordan, you know, I mean, those guys, uh, Miami, Miami stepped up and swooped in there and, and uh, did a great job of, of acquiring him and excited to see him back healthy next year and, and, and going. And obviously, Bobby being with DQ again. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a cool thing. And, and obviously, you know, uh, we feel like, you know, there's a, we have a need at linebacker and, uh, we'll be working to address that position as well as a couple of others. We keep going here. Hey, John, we, we talked about you, uh, as far as the draft goes and, and also, you know, picking, um, you know, picking other coaches that would be a collaboration with, with those guys. And I kind of alluded to it a, a little bit with, um, you know, with Leo, uh, you know, how much of it is about Mike McDonald's defense and how much of it is about Ryan Grubb and the way his offense plays. I mean, how, how much does that fit in? I mean, is it a little bit of both? Probably. Oh, no, but... yeah. No, yeah, it really is. Um, and I'm sorry to, I interrupted you, Dave. Sure. Go ahead. No, I mean, it, it, it definitely is. The collaboration's been great, you know, with the offensive and defensive staffs, uh, knowing what they want, and then, and then uh, you know, getting their input on players. And, you know, in free agency, it's, it's you're constantly moving. So, you know, this guy disappears, you pivot to a different position. Play, player B disappears, you pivot, pivot to a, another player or a different position. And these guys have been – they've been working with, with great with us, and they've been flexible and, you know um, – Everybody in the personnel department's been, been doing a great job of, uh, you know, staying in contact with the agents. And, uh, you know, now we could talk to the players as well. So, yeah, I just, just, it, it, it's, it's great. You know, they had that week here together, uh, the coaches, uh, when we were at the combine. So we were able to get back together with those guys, kind of sit down and, and, uh, map things out with them and, and, uh, and move forward. But it's always, you know, free agency's a, free agency's a different deal every, every year, man. It's a, it's, 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 it's hard to peg and you have to, you have to put your, your, you know, you have to make your priorities. And, and like I told you last week, it's not, you have a, a blank piece of paper and you just walk out there and say, okay, you know, we need a left tackle. And now we'll go get a pass rusher. Now we're going to, you're, you're constantly adjusting to, to what the market is, is dictating. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited with the way it started. And, and, uh, you know, we have a, we still, we still have some work to do and, and, uh, we'll be recruiting some guys and trying to, you know, negotiate with, with some more players and then all in the process of uh, working towards the draft here because that's going to come up real fast. John, we've uh, Dave and I have been speculating. You told us that story of a couple of weeks ago when we talked to you from the hotel room and you said you were a little distracted because you were a little eh. – taken aback by the by the i guess the request the salary request from a free agent's agent that you were speaking with and we were every week every move that happened we're going it must have been this guy's agent it must have been uh <laughs> yeah. must have been this guy's agent I, I, no no looking at this deal had to be colby parkinson's yeah. agent maybe it was all of them now i feel like it's damian <laughs> lewis's agent because he received a huge <laughs> a huge deal with the panthers i don't i don't know if that surprised you at all but now it appears you have a need at guard but what what can you say about that was that something you were in no, on I, or? I, yeah we would have loved to have damian back it, it's just again you know you have to when you're putting this together it's it's a, it's a definitely a puzzle puzzle piece you know there's a, it's a big puzzle and you know you have to be you have to allocate you know funds to different positions and you have to stick to that otherwise you can get off course and we're all very happy for Damien. Uh, you know, some teams, you know, people are people are people build their teams in, in different ways every single year. So, uh, you know, down in Carolina, they're building it inside out, which is their prerogative. And and, uh, you know, I'm sure they're excited about the two uh, guards and, and Damien and, and uh, Haunt that they signed. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's just part of it's just part of the deal. It's 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 it's, it's not it's never uh easy when guys like you know you know uh a bobby leave or jordan leaves or colby or you know um you know nick below i mean these guys are these guys are they're great players and you know more importantly they're great people hey john is that that position one of the more misunderstood or hard to grade or i mean i i feel like when it comes to guard any any offensive line 
linemen, just the play. And, you know, we talked to Ray Roberts a lot because he's like, okay, that should have been the tight end blocking. You know, lots gets blamed on that. But, you know, as far as evaluation, is that one of the more challenging just because they're working so closely with uh, with the guy next to them and just how to grade them and things like that? Would you, would you say that's, that's probably Yeah, absolutely. Tougher? Yeah, hard hard to grade. I would say uh, it's it's more the uh, the lack of depth and, and and talent at the position over the years. It's it's it has we've seen it uh, deteriorate. You know, there's not a lot of offensive linemen you know making blocks and then doing a sack dance. You know, I mean, it's it's more it's a lot more fun, <laughs> a lot more fun when you're you know um, the young guys are you know playing defensive line. I would think a lot of, a lot of guys would think that that you know that's a little bit more fun than. Uh, you know, than, than, than blocking for, you know, a quarterback or running back. Right. So yeah, it's just the nature of the position. Um, it takes a special breed to play that, play that spot. You know, I, I keep telling people all the time that my friends that, you know, are, you know, a couple friends that are like, you know, taller than myself. I'm like, okay, make sure you you just make sure that your, your, your kid just, just, just get him big and get him some good feet, you know, like make him jump rope all the time and have him be an offensive lineman. Cause those guys are going to start getting paid. So but no, the guys get guys get overdrafted at that position, and in my and in my opinion, they get overpaid. Hey, John, what one move you guys made that I I was a little confused by, and that was the I guess you restructured D Eskridge's deal to some extent. I know this isn't huge money or anything, but I I guess I'm just trying to figure out what it is he brings to the team because he's a guy that's not been available for a lot of his his time here because of injuries and some off the field issues as well. I just I I, I don't quite understand his role or or the the significance of uh, his spot on the roster. What do what do you see in what do you see in uh, in D Eskridge? We want to give D a, a, a fresh start, second chance. You know, if if uh, if, we'd have, if our coaching staff would have been here, uh, same as last year, you know, we would have we would have probably said, hey, D, you know, this might be a good time for you to like, you know, get a fresh start somewhere else. But, you know, everybody in the in the building loves him, and you know, there's a new staff here now, so you know, we just told him like, let's 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 try this fresh again. What he gives you is an extremely explosive uh, player with the ball in his hands, and you know, it's 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 something where it clicks for people at, at certain times and we want to give him the opportunity to have that, uh, to make that happen here. And, you know, the staff, uh, the guys that, you know, had evaluated him were very intrigued. Uh, this new staff, very intrigued with, uh, his past, you know, the college play. And, uh, you know, he's a very highly thought of player coming out of college. And so, uh, yeah, we just want to give him another shot and, and we didn't want to, um, uh, you know, we didn't want to be anywhere else. So, uh, we were able to restructure his contract and get him back here, and and hopefully he he takes the ball and runs with it. Kind of interesting, you know, with uh, with Will Disley and and Colby Parkinson signing uh, elsewhere, but you signed back Noah Fant, and just tell us, you know, where where you think uh, he fits as far as ranking tight ends around the league. Like he, he seems like a really good pass catcher, good at after the catch. Uh, tell us about his blocking and the attributes that that made you want to hold on to him. Yeah, well, he's he's definitely improved. He's improved as a blocker, but he's really, you know, he can be a special threat as a tight end in, in the passing game. And so pairing him with with Pharaoh Brown, you know, Pharaoh, in our opinions, you know, top two, three blocking tight ends in the National Football League, he brings a nastiness to us. So those two guys' skill sets are are are, are going to be really nice. And uh, you know, I think it's those two guys working together is going to be a great fit. But you know, I think it's 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 a it's a it's really cool for the you know the NFL to basically see Colby and Dis and Noah like that was like those guys that was a really good room a very talented room last year and you know really happy for Dis to be able to go down to the Chargers and you know uh, you know Colby we would love to have Colby back as well but you know the Rams Rams swooped him up right away and you know uh, he went to high school right down there so uh, you know he's going home so we're happy for him but. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys saw Noah. I mean, the last two years now, he's he's been explosive with the ball in his hand, and you know he can stretch a defense. Well, and you guys bring in Pharaoh Brown, who you know, just looking at numbers, not watching a bunch of his his tape, numbers are pretty similar to what what happened with Will last year. Obviously, at a much lower price. But what what do you see out of Pharaoh Brown? Well, he's a guy that can take care of the C gap. He can really block down. Uh, he's nasty. He's going to bring a toughness to our to our uh, offense. He's a tempo setter. I mean, he's he's kind of he's got he's a little little bit of an old soul that way. He's gonna 
he's going to fight you and, and not back down. And, and I think that's, uh, that's going to rub off on our, our offensive identity. I think you'll, you'll, you'll see that in the run game for sure. Hey, John, uh, I'm, we keep talking about how excited you were last year when we got you on. You were, you just signed Drew Locke and, um, you know, I, I'm just curious ab- about him because he he didn't sign for a, a lot more uh, than than he was getting. Was it more about getting a chance to uh, to to start, or w- what do you think? Just tell us the the thinking there with with Drew Locke and you know how important your your backup quarterback position is for you. Yeah, another well, you know, arguably the most important position on the field, right? But. Uh, you know, not arguably, it is, uh, basically, but, um, you know, you know, another rough conversation, really happy for Drew. Uh, he's able to, you know, it's really the opportunity, Dave. Yes, to your point, uh, they, they basically sold him on the opportunity to compete to be a starter. And, uh, he felt like it was, it was, it was the right opportunity. He looked at Baker Mayfield's, uh, opportunity last year and felt that this could be something similar. And, uh, you know, he worked with Gino every day and, and, uh, you know, he obviously didn't feel that way. And, and so he made a career decision and, you know, we're, we're rooting for him. He's a great person. And, you know, he's, he's a, obviously he came in the, in the big trade we made several years ago and, and, uh, was a great fit in the building. And, you know, that's it, it's another, another guy, but look, all these guys that left, you know, especially, you know, the, you know, Diggsy and, and, and Jamal and, you know, Dis and, you know, the, the, the Monet, the, the cap casual guys, that, that, that's, 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 that was rough. And then, but, you know, these guys that are leaving in free agency too. I mean, it's about their opportunity. And, and, uh, so you have to be, you have to be excited for those guys. Obviously would love to have Drew back, but, uh, you know, he made a decision. And at that point, you know, that's when we got, uh, very active in, in the, the trade, um, uh, the trade portion for the, uh, you know, the quarterback position. Uh, another guy you brought back is George Fant, and Seahawks fans are familiar with him. He's been with the Jets. You bring him back over. What, what's the, I guess the plan for him is he is he depth? Uh, you know, if if Abe Lucas can't go at right tackle, or do you have something different in mind for him? Yeah, he did a really nice job last year. You know, uh, down in Houston. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of a could play left tackle, could play right tackle. Has played a little guard in the past. We know him very well, obviously. And and uh, yeah, he's he's a great guy. Really excited to be back in the building. And so it's great to see his, his smiling face today. He's a, he's a you know great competitor and really good really good dude and and uh you know it was, it, was, it was pretty neat to see him you know hugging all the people in the building and you know he's missed uh over the years and so he was excited to get back but yes his role will be as a you know like a utility uh, uh offensive tackle hey john uh you know i, I i'm not going to ask you exactly you know what your process is going to be to get linebackers but you know we're, we're looking at that position and um, and, and again, kind of with the same theme of, you know, how much of it is uh, input from Mike McDonald and what he wants out of out of that position. And just, you know, um, it was Jordan Brooks kind of like a, you know, we're not going to go over that, that we're disciplined. We have a number or was there something that he maybe uh, wasn't the best at as far as the, the new defense? Just. Kind of tell no, me how it, that went down. No, really, really, it was it was the timing of it. Uh, you know, we were working on Leonard. Uh, Leonard's deal took a while, and we knew Leonard's deal was going to affect, you know, all free agency. And so, you know, they had a deal on the table, and and uh, we just couldn't move as quickly as, as they could. They, had, you know, they had uh, they had lost out on a couple guys that day, and so they were moving quickly. And uh, we had, you know, we had we had prioritized. Leonard, uh, you know, ahead of the, the linebacker position at that point. So it's basically like D-line ahead of a linebacker. And so, um, you know, you have to take emotion out of it. And, uh, you know, because we love Jordan, drafted him number one here and everything. And, and uh, you know, you have to take emotion out of it and just do what's best for the organization. And that's that's uh, that's what we did. And so we prioritized Leonard. You know, uh, Miami moved very, very fast with Jordan. And, uh, again, they had lost on a couple of people so they could move in a little bit quicker manner than we could. Uh, one other new face out there is Rayshon Jenkins. Uh, you, you talked about Jamal and Quandre no longer here, so you got you got some spots to fill. What? How do you see him fitting in? Yeah, he was a, you know, cap cut down in Jacksonville and uh, played a lot of high, you know, one high this year for them and then played down in, in, in the box as well. He's He's been known more as, like, a strong safety but uh, really aggressive, 
he was like the second guy, you know, to wear the dot. If if a linebacker were to left the game, um, you know, he would he would have been able to call it for them. And you know, smart football player. Um, you know, like I said, we'll play probably more too high this year or split safeties. And uh, he has ability to do both. And you know, extremely disruptive player. You know, we loved him coming out of college. He was he was college roommates with Artie Burns or college teammates with Artie Burns. And then uh, you know, we watched him with the Chargers and then obviously now most lately with Jacksonville. But uh yeah, that was you know, he came here and visited and then was down in San Francisco. He's down in the Bay Area. So thank God for those uh California state taxes, right? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Uh hey John, you know, just looking at the the salary or I'm sorry, the franchise tag numbers and how how important defensive tackle has become, you know, and I think they're what third, maybe as far as the, the franchise tag number, it's quarterback wide receiver. They're even a little bit ahead of, of uh, defensive ends, but you know, on your priority sign in uh, Leonard Williams, um, it, it's just, and I think it's also kind of confusing to people because they don't put up big numbers. If you get double digit sacks as a defensive tackle, my God, I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, right, it's, right. it's like Cortez Kennedy, you know, but, right, um, exactly. but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting how the game has shifted a little bit and, you know, the money tells the story, right? Like running backs are, exactly. you know, the last, you know, other than kickers, then tight ends, but um, yeah, D tackle just uh, amazing how important that is to your team uh, based on, you know, where the numbers go. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, you have to you have to take those guys. You have to draft them very high, and uh, you know, or you have to you know trade for them and give up significant you know draft compensation um, in order to acquire those guys. And that's just the way it is. I mean, especially you know finding the big you know tall, long, athletic guys that can get off the ball and and rush the passer like like Leo can. He you know again he's he's got that ability to you know you can move him around. And and I think the defensive staff is. They're really excited to be able to work with him. But yes, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, the, you know, Chris Jones basically set the market, you know, it's a huge deal, uh, rightfully so. Great, great, great player. But, uh, yeah, we've seen that creep up a lot the last several years. And, you know, I think it'll continue to creep up as the cap increases. John, you, you've talked about this in the past when it comes to the draft that you guys draft the best guy possible best guy on the board it's not necessarily oh we need a linebacker so we're going to draft a linebacker uh i I would assume with a new regime in there a new you're in control obviously uh with a new coaching staff that that philosophy doesn't change yeah i don't think that no that that won't be changing obviously you know our grades reflect how what what our team looks like so you know where we are right now with the linebacker position yeah you know that's going to be a an area that we're going to concentrate on but not any more than um we have in the past with you know specific needs over time you get you do get in trouble um and you know when when you do draft for need and you have to learn from your lessons and um you know learns from you know some of the mistakes you know we've made over the years and 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 obviously you know drafting for need is, is is one of those and so we will continue to take the best competitors people and football players uh regardless of position Sorry, you no, can't I know that that'll, that'll be very that'll be scrutinized, right? No, I get it. Like, yeah, you know, you got they got to take this player, or that player. I get it, and then, you know, you got to wait till they start playing football in the fall before we can start judging. Yeah, yeah. John, as always, great stuff. We appreciate it. We'll, yeah, we'll see you in person. I, I like next it much time. better. I was gonna say it's much better than we're when, when we're like together. This is, you know, I'm not. You know, wait, you, wait. You like this better? You don't like seeing? No, 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 no. I saying? like I like I like sitting with you guys better. It's like you know, this just feels odd. Yeah, you're alone with Pearson, right? That's got to be uncomfortable. Oh, man, it's just, just Dave and I. Yeah, <laughs> that's rough. Uh, we appreciate you. Okay, John. enjoy your time and enjoy your vacation down there, fellas. I'm glad you know you guys are getting oh. some time off here. Uh, dude, we're, we're working, working our come tails on. Yeah, come on, what? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, fellas, have Thanks, a great John. day. There you go. John Schneider, everybody.